Hello everybody, how are you? It's great to see so many people here again. That's awesome. Especially because I'm teaching at a different time than usual. Usually I teach in the morning, but tomorrow, tomorrow is a big holiday in the United States. Tomorrow is a holiday called Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is a very fun holiday where everybody meets with their families and they eat a big dinner. It's very fun. <laughs> so the schools and the businesses are closed tomorrow. Everything is closed. It's a little bit like Christmas because all the stores and all the businesses are closed. So I'm happy to be teaching you today. And today we're going to learn about there, the word there, especially there is, there are, there was, there were, expressions like that. Well, I hope we have a good time today. All right, so before we get too far into our lesson, I want to remind everybody that if you want to be a premium subscriber, you can go to this website, www.smartenglish.com slash live slash live, and you can try one month for free. Premium subscribers get homework and tests and access to the smart website and cool stuff like that. But of course, you can always watch the videos for free too. <laughs> so, all right, are we ready to get started? Yay, let's go. So we're going to begin with there is and there are. So let's take a look at our slideshow presentation. I'll explain what it means first. And after that, I'll talk about how to make sentences with there is and there are. Okay, here we go. So first, it says here, we use there is or there are to say that something exists or doesn't exist. Exist means that something is real or true or actual in the world. It's not just a dream. It's a real true thing in the world. Let's look at some examples. This sentence says, there's water in the glass. This means water exists in the glass. There is water in the glass. Let's see if we have another example. Here we go. There are birds in the tree. This means there exists birds in the tree. And here's an example for past. It says there was a party last night. There was a party last night. So this happened in the past. It existed in the past. And finally, an example with were, there weren't many rainy days in July. This means in July, in the past, many rainy days didn't exist. All right, so, one question many, many students ask is what is the difference between where and there? Because we often use there and where to talk about place. So I'd like to give you a couple examples so we can see how where and there are a little bit different. Let's go to our notes. Okay, here we go. So here, where versus there. 
I have two questions and two answers. It says here, where is the hospital? We can answer this question. The hospital is on Main Street. Where is the hospital? The hospital is on Main Street. Where asks for the location or asks for the place. Is there a hospital is a little different. Is there a hospital means hospital or no hospital. For example, in your city, hospital or no hospital. That's what it's asking here. Does a hospital exist in your city? So is there a hospital? Our answer can be yes, there is. Or for negative, we could say no, there isn't. Yes, there is. No, there isn't. Is that clear, the difference between where and there? Okay, let me take a moment. I'm going to check the chat and see if we have any questions so far. And then I'll show you how to make sentences with there. Let's take a look. Do, 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 do. Hmm. Oh gosh, lots of people joining us now. Oh, fantastic. So good. So there is is for yes or no questions and where is for a place. Absolutely, Brian, very good job. This is going to be an easy lesson for you guys. Don't worry, I'll make it a little harder at the end. I'll add some vocabulary. <laughs> okay, let's go back to our slideshow. So I talked a little bit about what it means. Let's look at how to make sentences with there is and there are. And if you're just joining us, welcome. So welcome to the Smart Life classes. So this lesson, if you have access to the Smart website, is in Unit 4. So Unit 4, Grammar 4-1. All right. So let's start with another example. It says here, there is a famous zoo in San Diego. It has many beautiful animals. Good, so there is means a famous zoo exists in San Diego. So let's look at the form. For singular nouns, we can say there is or there's. And for past, we say there was. There is or there's for present and there was for past. For example, there is a hospital on Burrard Street. Or there's a hospital on Burrard Street. Or there was a hospital on Burrard Street. If we say there was a hospital, it means before existed the hospital, but now Maybe there's nothing. Maybe there's a different building. Maybe there's a park in the same place, but no hospital because this is the past. All right. For negatives, we say there is not, there's not, or there isn't. You have a choice here. There is not, there's not, or there isn't. For present, for past, there was not or there wasn't. For example, uh, there isn't a television in the room or there was not a television in the room. Those are examples with singular nouns for negative. So negative singular nouns. All right, let's go a little further. So we talked about singular. The opposite of singular is plural. So here's for plural nouns. We have there are. So there are three people at the table. 
Or for the past, there were three people at the table. And for negative, we can say there are not or there aren't. There were not or there weren't for past. So for example, there are not 31 days in April. Or if we're talking just about last April, we can say there were not or there weren't 31 days in April. All right. We talked a little bit already about yes or no questions, but here's a couple examples. We can say, is there a party at Dave's house? Or was there a party at Dave's house? So instead of there is for the question, we just switch and say, is there? Or instead of there was, was there? So just like for many other kinds of questions, we just switch the subject and the be verb. All right. Here's some examples for plural. We can say, are there apples in the tree? Or were there apples in the tree? And here are some short answers, which we also looked at a little bit. We can say, yes, there is, for singular, present. Yes, there are, for, singu for plural, present. Yes, there was, for singular, past. And yes, there were, for plural, past. So these are some different choices, depending on singular, or plural, present, or past. But really, if you know your B verbs, this is very, very easy stuff. <laughs> For the negatives, we just add not. Like there is not, there is not, or there isn't. There are not, there aren't. There was not, there wasn't. There were not, there weren't. Let's stop there for a moment. I'll see if we have any questions in the chat. And then let's make a few examples together and see if we understand 100%. All right, let's see if we have any questions. Do, 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 do. All right, so no questions so far. Lots of nice comments though. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> so let's make a few example sentences together. Let's go to our notes. All right, and let's start with there is and there are. So in the chat, let's write some examples for there is and there are. And then let's also try some for past. Let's say there was and there were. So let's make a few examples. While I'm waiting for your examples, I'll make some of my own. I'm going to say, let's see, there is a clock on the wall. There are people outside. There was a, a bird outside my window. And there were, hmm, there were, hmm, there were technical problems in Neil's class. Was it yesterday? I think it was yesterday. There were technical problems in Neil's class yesterday. Oh no, Monday. On Monday. Yeah, unfortunately, he had some microphone problems if you watched Neil's class on Monday. So let's see what examples you guys have in the chat. All right. Oh, so good night for the people who are going to bed. I'll miss you guys. Let's see, there is a dog in my house. Good example. There is a dog in my house. Perfect. There are great teachers at Spokane College. Oh, I like this one. 
at Spokane College. Very nice. There is a football match between, oops, let me write this down. There is a football match between Manchester United and Chelsea. Oh, is that true? Ooh, I wonder when that is. <laughs> there are a lot of students online today. Ooh, that very true. There are a lot of students online today. Let's see. There was a class with Joshua yesterday. Good job with was. With Joshua yesterday. Good. There's a soccer game tonight. Very good. There's a sofa in my room. There are two cafeterias at school. Well, let's make sure to add our S. So let me write this one for you. Uh, let's see. There are two cafeterias. We just need an S right here because it's plural. Uh, uh, in my, was it in my school? At school. Very good. There are people who prefer coffee. There was a two-hour class with Neil today. Good, very good, and true. <laughs> there are beautiful flowers in the garden. Oh, Juan Pablo asked a question. There was money or there were money? Oh, good question. We can say there was money. We don't say there were money because money is a non-count noun. Non-count nouns or uncountable nouns are nouns that we can't count. We can't say five money. We can say five dollars or five cents or five reals or five yen, but we can't say five money. So anything you can't count, like liquids, for example, you can't count water, or orange juice, or coffee, or gas. Non-count nouns. We always act like they're singular. So we use singular verbs. So non-count nouns, we act like they're singular. So we would say, for example, money is important. So we use is because money is a non-count noun. And that's true for all non-count nouns. It's also true for gerunds. I know gerunds are a little advanced for the 115 uh, pre-intermediate crowd, but if you know gerunds already, which a lot of you do, I'm sure, a gerund is a verb ing. So if you have a gerund as a subject, like swimming, then we would say swimming is fun. So gerunds are also always non-count nouns. <laughs> All right, great question. Oh, and lots of other good examples too. So there are beautiful flowers in the garden. Let's see. I like football a lot and both of these are my favorite teams. There are many stars in the sky. Oh, we have a question here from uh, Matthias. There is a lot is correct. Good, let's see. There is a lot of um, rain today, for example. Yes, you can say there is a lot, mm -hmm. especially for non-count nouns. So good, good question. You can say that, absolutely. There are many books. There's some soda left in the bottle. Uh, that was a nice movie in CNN channel. And so we're gonna say on, on CNN. So let me write that one for you, but very good. Uh, where is that sentence? We have so many sentences here. Uh, ah, here we go. There was a nice movie on, I'll say CNN. We could say on the channel, CNN. Very good, but we'll say on. We always say on for television. 
Although it doesn't really make sense, I know when you think about it, because really, it should be in the TV, not on the TV. But we always say on for television. Good, good question. Was there a cat on top of the roof? Good, good job. Can we say there are a lots of apples? Ooh, good question from Anka. No, you can't. <laughs> and it's because of the uh. There are, where is this question? Um, there are a lots of apples. No, we can't say this because a uh and lots don't match together. We can say there are lots of apples, no a, uh, or we can say there are a lot of apples. But the first one, I'm going to cross it out. The first one we can't say. You can't say A and then put an S because A is singular and S is plural, so they don't match together. Good, good question. Let's see. Um, any other questions? So good, very good examples, everybody. Great question. So I think on the slideshow presentation, there's only one more thing to practice, and that's how much and how many. So let's take a look at questions with how much and how many. Here we go. So here are some examples with how many. We often use how many or how much with um, is there and are there was there and were there. So let's look at some examples. So we have an example here. It says how many students or stadiums are there in your class or in your city? We use many for count nouns. So nouns that you can count. For example, I can count apples, I can count phones, tables, chairs, people. If you can count one, two, three, four, five, this is a count noun. So with count nouns, we say how many, and then we always use the plural form and then we say, are there? How many students are there in your class? Good. All right. So, oh, it doesn't talk about how much. Hmm. Well, I will make my own slide then. <laughs> so let me put right here. So we said, how many? Like, how many students? are there. We can also say things like how much money is there? Because money, again, is a non-count noun. And non-count nouns get singular verbs. Also, non-count nouns, we don't say many, we say much. So how much money is there? So let's see if we can think of some, some questions like this in the chat. How many or how much? I'll put a few more examples, but you try to make some examples in the chat too, okay? All right, let me think of some more examples. So for how many, I can say, how many people Mm, how many people are there today in the chat? <laughs> or I could say, how many uh, computers 
are there in the computer lab? Or how many days are there until Christmas? So those are some examples with how many. I'll put a few with how much, and then I'll add your examples. Let's see. Hmm, how much money is there? How much coffee is there in the coffee pot? What's another uncount noun? How about gas? Like petrol, gas? So how much gas is there in the car? So with how much, we're going to say is there. And for how many, we're going to say are there. So let's see what you guys wrote. Okay, oh gosh, we have lots and lots of examples. Okay, so how many times did you watch your most favorite movie? Great job with how many. How many people are, there, are here watching this class? Good, we can change there to here to change the location to something a little nearer. Absolutely, very good. Let's see. How much sugar do you need? Good. And we don't always have to use there, like are there or is there. Um, you can use how much and how many with others, other kinds of grammar too, with present simple or past simple. Good, good. How many subscribers do you have in your class? How much does that chemistry book cost? How many children are there at school? Very good, those are all great questions. I'll write a few of these on here. I'm gonna write the ones that have there, just because that's the focus of the lesson. And that way when I send my notes to my subscribers, they'll have lots of examples with there. So let's see, how many children are there at school? Good. Uh, how much water is there in the bottle? Good. Very nice. How much sugar is there in the cup? Good. How many teachers teach English? Good question. Uh, let's see. How many bus areas are there, oh, how many buses are there uh, in, ooh, I'm not sure what inform, Informico City means. Maybe in the city? I can write that. I can say how many buses, how many buses are there in the city? And we'll just make buses plural because for how many, we always need a plural noun here, plural noun. Children doesn't have S and people doesn't have S because they are irregular plurals. Person, people, child, children. Good, good. Oh, we have a news person joining us. Hello, Madeline. So uh, my name is Nicole and welcome, welcome there in the Dominican Republic. We're learning about there is and there are. Good, how much love is there in your heart? Oh, I like that one, I'm gonna write that down. How much love is there in your heart? Very nice. How many cars are there in the parking lot? Very nice. Very, very good job, everybody. So I think this lesson is maybe a little easy for this particular crowd. <laughs> so I think maybe we can move on to some vocabulary. So we're starting new vocabulary this week from unit four of the pre-intermediate class. So are you ready for some new vocabulary? All right. If you are new to my class, or if you haven't seen my lessons recently, I always do vocabulary the same way. I will show you five words, and I'll explain each word, and then I'll stop. 
and we'll make some examples, I'll answer questions, and you can ask me whatever you like about the words. Does that sound good? I hope so. Okay, here we go for some new vocabulary. Unit four. Oops, let me go back to the beginning. Here we go. Unit four vocabulary. Our first word today is alone. Oh, it's such a sad picture. Alone is an adjective. And it means separate or away from other people. So for example, the child is afraid of being alone in the dark. If you are the only person in your house or in your apartment, then you are alone right now. Our next word, and this word can be difficult for some students. This word is back. Back is a noun. It's not a preposition and it's not a verb. But students often try to use this word like a preposition or like a verb. So let's look at this example. It says here, Let's sit at the back of the bus. See here, at the back, at is a preposition, the is an article, so back is a noun, it's an object here. So back is a noun. So back is also part of your body. So your back is here. Oh. I can't, I can't quite reach it. <laughs> but so it's the opposite of your front, front, back. So sometimes people try to say like, I back to my country next week. That's a little bit of a different word. I'm gonna put this in our notes. The verb here is go back. So if you want to talk about the verb to mean like return somewhere, We say go back. For example, maybe I will go back to my hometown uh, next year, for example. But you have to say go because back is not a verb. <laughs> so an important point because many students have trouble with that. All right, so we have alone and back, let's do three more and then we'll stop for a moment. Our next word is bakery. Bakery is a noun, it's a place. It's a place where people cook or bake bread or cookies or pastries. So baking is a kind of cooking that you do inside an oven. Not on top, but inside an oven. So bakeries usually have bread and sweets like cake or cookies. Our example says, this bakery makes the best bread. All right, so let's do two more. Ah, uh, our next word is block. Block has many, many meanings in English. It can be a noun, it can be a verb. But this meaning in this picture is a city block. A city block. A city block is like one square of streets is a block. So if you have street, 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 street to make a square, the square is a block. So if you say the mall is four blocks from here, this mean the mall, the, means the mall is four like city squares away, <laughs> like four streets 
away. Does that make sense? All right, so a block is a square of land, a square of streets. It's not an exact size. It just means this many streets. We have one more. Oh, this maybe is an easy one. So bottom, and bottom again is a noun. It says the power button is at the bottom of the TV. The opposite of bottom is top. Top, bottom. Very, very good. Are we ready? So we had five words, bottom, block, bakery, back, and alone. So I'm going to check the chat for any questions or example sentences, and I'll add them to our notes. All right, let's take a look. Do, 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 do. Oh, we have a bunch of ones for alone. Good, good, good. Oh, yep. And, oh, so someone says they're seeing me live for the first time. Yay, not in record. I know it's nice to sometimes do different times of lessons. So, I was sadly alone yesterday night. Good example. I was sadly alone yesterday night. Oh, I'm so sorry. I hope that's just an example. I feel alone today because Vivek isn't here. I know, it's so weird without Vivek here. He always comes to my lessons. All right. Um, I enjoy traveling alone. Let's see. Um, oh, we have one for go back. So in one month, I will go back to university. Oh, good. Congratulations. <laughs> All right. All right, I hadn't been alone until I left Jerry. Good. I hadn't been alone until I left Jerry. Good. I don't like the bakery around this city. Let me add that one here. I don't like the bakery. And actually, let's make this plural, the bakeries around this city. Because if it's around the city, there's more than one bakery. So we should make it plural. Good. I went back to my hometown. Good, and that's like go back to. So I'll put that here. I went back. Oops, I went back to my hometown. Very nice. Every morning I buy bread from the bakery. Good. Buy, oops, buy bread from the bakery. Good, good job. Bakeries have delicious food. I agree, I love bakeries. Bakeries have <laughs> delicious food. Good, I love going to the bakery. These are all wonderful examples. You guys are too good, I don't have anything to correct. <laughs> All right, so I had to walk eight blocks to come here. Oh, very good grammar. I had to walk eight blocks to come here. Very nice. The bakery is 220 blocks from here. Oh, wow, that's really far. The bakery is 220 blocks from here. Oh, that's very far. Don't walk, maybe drive. Okay, I could live all my life in a bakery. Oh, that sounds nice. I could live all my life in a bakery. Me too. <laughs> Good. Oh, okay, we have a, a couple with lots of vocabulary words. Oh, let me do one more for alone. We have, I left my cats alone at home. Very nice. And then we have some big sentences that use a lot of different vocabulary words. Okay, let's see. I was alone in my house 
And suddenly, I decided to go to the bakery because, and we just have to add a pronoun here, because it's, or it was, I can say it was, or it is, it still is, right? It's at the bottom of my block. Wow, very nice. We used a lot of vocabulary words together. Good job. Let's see. My dog remains alone at home when I'm at work. Very nice. While you are reading, you could write your notes at the bottom of the paper. Very good. I walked three blocks alone in order to find a good bakery, but I went back home because I felt sick. Wow, these are wonderful sentences. I went to the bakery and I bought bread for my breakfast. I love bakeries from the bottom of my heart. Me too. <laughs> I used to live two blocks uh, far from high school. Good, although we don't have to say far. We can just say, I used to live two blocks from high school. But we don't have to say, we don't have to say far. Mm -hmm. Very good. I always sit in the back of the class. Oh, good. We don't have very many for back, so it's nice to have. We have some for go back, but not just back. So I always sit in the back of the class. Very nice. So no questions about these vocabulary words? If you think of a question, feel free to write it in the chat. But. Let's go ahead and keep going. We'll see how many words we can get today before we have to finish. All right, let's see if we can do at least five more. Okay, here we go. Five more vocabulary words. Just to review, we talked about alone, back, bakery, block, and bottom. Our next word is building. Oh, that's an easy one, huh? I think all of you know this word. <laughs> so building is a noun, and it's a place. So it's a structure, for example, a house or a place with offices. Um, so it's a structure that people go inside. It can be a house or a business. Our example sentence says, there are many office buildings in this part of town. So good, very good. Our next word is ceiling. Ceiling, and the C-E here sounds like an S. Ceiling, and our example says, we've painted the walls and the ceiling white. Ceiling, is the top part of a room. Sometimes people confuse the words ceiling and roof. So let me put this in our notes. Ceiling and roof. Ceiling versus roof, I can say. <laughs> so a ceiling is the top of a room. So it's going to be inside, inside a room or inside a house is the ceiling. Roof is the top of a building and it's outside. So if you are outside, you're looking at the roof. If you're inside, you're looking at the ceiling. But ceiling and roof are both the top part of a room or a building. It's just one is inside and one is outside. All right, let's do a couple more words. Do, 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 do. Our next word is clock. Oh, that's an easy one too. So here clock is a noun and our example says, let's put the clock on the wall in the kitchen. So this right here is a clock. So clock is just what we use to measure the time. So it's the tool that we use to measure or track time. Here we go, another one. Corner. 
corner again is a noun. A corner is where two lines meet together. So this here is a corner. So streets can have corners. Tables can have corners. Even my phone has a corner. So anytime two lines meet together like this, this is a corner. Now our example sentence says, the store is on the corner of Oxford Avenue and Robson Street. Right, I think we can do one more and then we'll stop. Costume, costume. So this is a noun. A costume is a kind of uh, clothes, clothing. And you wear a costume so you can look like a different person or a different thing. So for example, let's imagine you, you are not a superhero. I know, maybe some of you are superheroes, but let's imagine you are not a superhero, but you wear uh, Batman, Batman's clothes. <laughs> this is a costume because there you are not Batman, but you want to look like Batman. This is a costume. Or if you want to look like a ghost or a zombie or a princess, you can wear a costume. In the United States and some other countries too, we have a holiday called Halloween. Halloween is a popular holiday for wearing costumes, especially children. Children, like in this picture, wear costumes. And our example sentence says, everybody wears a costume on Halloween. So most people only wear costumes for special holidays or if they are acting, acting in a movie or acting in a stage play. Um, the only other time people usually wear costumes is for cosplay. Cosplay is a very popular kind of event where people wear costumes from things like comic books and then they meet together at conventions. So that's popular in places like Japan and the United States. All right, let's review our words. We have costume, corner, clock, ceiling, and building. So I'm gonna look at the chat, see if we have any questions, and I'll start adding some examples to our notes for these words here. Okay, let's take a look at the chat. Do, 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 gotta scroll back a little bit. Okay. Let's see. Still on bakeries, bottom. Bakery, build, oh here, buildings, okay. So New York has a lot of buildings. Very good. Uh, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai is the tallest building in the world. Good. Oops, I misspelled building here. Nicole, bad typing, here we go. Building in the world, very good. Let's see, I live in a building. Good. Oh, and again, Burj Khalifa is the tallest building in the world. Very nice. Ceiling inside, roof outside is what Rosa says. Absolutely. Uh, Russia has a lot of ancient buildings. Ooh, very nice. I want to visit Russia someday. Russia and the whole eastern part of Europe, I've never been there. I think it would be really exciting. Uh, there's a fan attached to the ceiling of my room. Very good. There's a fan 
attached to the ceiling of my room. And you use the target grammar for today. There is. Perfect. Very good job. Let's see. Oh, so Madeline asked, is bakery only for bread and cookies? We can use bakery for bread, cookies, pastries. Pastries are things like croissants or, let's see, scones or scones, as they say in British English. So cakes also, usually things that are sweet, but it can be for things that are savory too, if it's similar to bread. We don't use the bake word bakery for things like uh, pizza. I know pizza goes inside an oven, but we don't use the word bakery. So good, good question. The ceiling of my house is tall. I would say, instead of tall, I would say high. So let me write this here. The ceiling of my house is high. We'd say that the wall is tall, but the ceiling is high. Because the wall, we can, it goes up and down. Things that go up and down are usually tall, but if it's like this, horizontal, we don't usually say tall, we'll say high instead. So good, very good. Um, Oh, so Madeline asked, can I use it for meat? No, a, a bakery, very good question. Bakery is just for bread, bread, and things like bread. If you wanna talk about meat, we say butcher. So butcher is the name of the person or the place where you can buy meat. Is that a butcher? Or a, we can say butcher shop is okay, butcher, butcher shop. This is the place for meat. Good, good question. Ah, so Santos asks about clock and watch. So clock, maybe versus watch. What is the difference, clock and watch? So a watch is a clock that you wear on your wrist. So watch, is something that you wear on your wrist. If it's not on your wrist or if you're not wearing it, sometimes you can wear it maybe, maybe if you're a 1980s hip hop singer, <laughs> you could have a clock or a watch on your chest. You could say watch for that. Or we have pocket watches, maybe from 100 years ago, people had pocket watches. But if you wear it, it's usually a watch. If it's on the wall or on the table, we usually say clock. So good, good question. Uh, a clock is used to calibrate time. Very good, let me put that for clock. A clock is used to calibrate time. Good, or to measure time, good. We should have the custom to say hello to everybody in the street. Oh, that's true. Although custom and costume are a little bit different. I'm gonna put that though. Custom is like this. Custom means habit. So let, let me put your sentence here. We should have the custom to say hello to everybody in the street. So good, that's a good example for custom meaning habit. But costume with an O will be like clothes. Clothes that make you look like a different person or a different thing. Good. Oh, it's okay, Rosa. I'll see you later. <laughs> so I have a fan on my room ceiling. Very good. Um, so costumes are casual dress, whereas uniforms are mandatory for schools or work. Very good, I'll put that one for costume. So costumes are casual dress. Usually that's true. Like usually we can say costumes are something casual. Um, 
whereas uniforms are mandatory for schools or work. Absolutely. Uh, let's see, we have one. There's a clock hanging from the ceiling near the corner of the hallway in my apartment building. Wow, that's, that's good for a lot of them. Let me put that one here at the end. There's a clock hanging from the ceiling near the corner of the hallway in my apartment building. It has a picture of a man wearing a costume <laughs> of Spider-Man. Wow, very good job. You used all the vocabulary and the grammar point all together. That's very impressive. Good job. <laughs> very nice. Let's see, let's do some other ones. We have, there's a restaurant on the corner. It's a restaurant on the corner. Good, I have a sculpture in the corner of my room. Ooh, very nice, a sculpture. I have a sculpture in the corner of my room. Let's see. Good, good, good. So, very good job. I do not like costumes. Good. A lot of people don't. Uh, because they can be scary and they hide. They hide who people are. So sometimes they're for fun for celebrations, but many people don't like them. It's a good point. So costumes are used in carnival and Halloween parties. Very good. So let's see. I'll put that here. Costumes are used in... If you want to say carnivals in general, we'll make it plural. If you want like carnival, like the, the big event, then we would make a capital C and no S. So it depends on which one you mean. But costumes are used in carnivals and Halloween parties. Very good. All right, so in Brazil, we wear costumes for carnival. Very nice. Good job, everybody. Very, very good. Excellent examples. Let's see. Looks like we don't have time to do any more of the vocabulary today. Oh well. <laughs> but I will be back next week at my usual time. So I teach this class usually um, at 7.30 a.m. Let me write this down actually, in case you're just joining for the first time. So my class is usually at 7.30 a.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And by 7.30 a.m., I mean Pacific Standard Time. So this is the time it is in Seattle or Spokane, for example. So that will be different, of course, in different countries. So right now, right now it's 3.30 p.m on a Wednesday, so definitely not my usual schedule. <laughs> but if you'd like to join again, yeah, please, I welcome you. Please come uh, see me on a Tuesday or Thursday starting next week. Tomorrow, no school, at least not for me. Josh, if you watch Joshua's classes, I think he rescheduled his classes, but I'm not 100%. He might come in and do his class tomorrow, I'm not sure. So again, one last note, if you're just joining us, if you want to be a premium subscriber and get homework and tests and access to the Smart website and all kinds of cool extra stuff, you can try one month for free at www.smartenglish.com slash live slash live but you can always watch for free too. All right, have a wonderful, beautiful day, everybody out there. And I hope you guys have a great weekend. So thank you so much, everybody, and goodbye.